okay. Yeah. Starting live video. I have to make sure it's actually going. There we go. Okay. Hey, everyone. I think we actually have it this time. <laughs> Not 100% sure, but we're trying. I might double check that, actually. <laughs> yes, yes. You can actually see us. Okay. So, um, today, we are sitting down and chatting again with one of our farmers from Yellow Cottage Farm, Susie. Um, she's Good been with us before. And we're going to just sort of talk again about local farming, organic farming, all of those things that people don't really understand how much work goes into. <laughs> all of the important things that they don't understand. Yeah. So, it is... February, and that can always be such a pivotal month for us here, where sometimes in February in the Houston area, it's already spring and in the high 80s, and sometimes it's, you know, we're still as high as 50 and it's really cold. So, um, now we have decided to do this every other week for this year. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. been... Weird. It's been really weird this year. Yeah, so that affects the plants and how they're growing or not growing. Right. Are you seeing a lot of problems with your stuff that you're planting? Well, we have all our brassicas are flowering because they think it's spring and they should be producing seed for next season. Oh my gosh. So our tatsoi is just beautiful, but it's not for eating. It's mostly flowering for seeds. Oh, uh, that's not helpful. <laughs> Oh, but it's still too cold to do tomatoes and cucumbers outside because oh, yeah. our frost date where we are is March 15th. It's, yeah. You know, roughly the last time we can get a frost. The um, the fall was early, um, so all of the green beans and things that we have planned for Thanksgiving were killed the week before Thanksgiving. <laughs> ah, right before Thanksgiving. Right. All the green beans died. They were all just fried. And because that's what happens <laughs> in our fluctuating really a lot. weird weather. Right. Yeah, so that's not normal, though. Yeah, I mean, usually normal. in November, green beans are happy and plentiful, and that's why they show up on the Thanksgiving table, right? right. right? Same with the pumpkins. And pumpkins, yep, right. They all froze. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's just weird. Right. Wow. So we're not counting on the weather remaining nice, but everything in our garden thinks it's really nice and it should be growing right now. <laughs> well, and so I would say that's a good thing, but like you said, some of the things are already going the, to flower. The and things that should be really happy are thinking their time is up. So they're, oh boy, you know, maybe not as sweet as they were two weeks ago. Yeah, and right. Yeah, so, oh my but gosh. we still can't get the tomatoes and cucumbers out yet, or they probably would freeze before yeah. we got them. Got, yeah, Any right. Part. It's too early for that. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that's always hard because I hear often um, customers who don't always understand eating seasonally. And, and what is the, okay, what are the seasons? Especially because we live here on the Gulf Coast. Yeah. And, and it can change. It can be 70 so, degrees and you're in yeah, shorts. Yeah, you know, exactly. The joke's like, yeah. what do you wear in Texas? It changes throughout the day. <laughs> right, exactly. And also, it can be, we basically have like seven months of the warm stuff and three months of spring, winter, fall. Right. <laughs> you know, that's what we have here. And so I think that confuses people as to their expectations of what they can find in the grocery store. Right. You right. know, and what they want to see at the farmer's market. And why can't you grow, yeah. you know, blueberries right now or you know what I mean I yeah. think they have different expectations and it's hard to explain that like right now is not tomato season where they're ripe and ready to eat and so tomatoes are going to cost more right and but people here just literally three days ago people were in shorts and right. short and sleeve yeah. and they're thinking I want my tomatoes it's almost as if they've lost that connection to seasonal eating and exactly what that means right yeah, and a, and a fellow farmer friend of mine up where we are has tomatoes, but she has a lot of infrastructure that put in place so she can do that. If you were to grow outside, you can't you can't do it. 
in their right way. Now. Right. So if she's got infrastructure put in, it's got to be on a pretty large scale right. in order to have any of that to share at a farmer's market or to sell for others. Right. I don't think people always understand that either. No. So then the cost goes up again. Yeah. Right. You're not just throwing a $2 packet of seed in the ground and, you know, <laughs> right. and voila, you know. <laughs> Oh, Not yeah, to mention all uh, the, the time that she puts into it. But, yeah, yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah see, that's They have the a thing. really awesome setup, but it, it, it's nothing I can do right now. Right, you right. Know? Yeah. Yeah, so that's why at the co op here, we supplement with our nationally certified organic supplier because we know customers are asking for tomatoes in winter. Yep. <laughs> you know, and yeah. that's not in season. Yeah. And the expectation is there that it, we should have recipe. it year round. Yeah, yeah, I think it's because the large grocery stores have gotten us used to yeah. eat whatever you want, we'll get it on the shelf for you, it doesn't matter what the season is. Right. And we've lost touch with that, right. what that means. Yeah. And so, and that's why we have to supplement, you know, right. um, from other suppliers so that we go to other climates that can grow tomatoes year round. year round outside yeah, yeah and they cost more because of the extra efforts they have to take and then yeah. ship them to us right and then the price is literally double right now on tomatoes you know then and rightly else. so because otherwise we wouldn't have any right so know? here's so. the weird part of that is so eating seasonally we can be a little more mindful about what we do at home and what we eat and prepare for ourselves right but if you go in the store, in a, road, a restaurant or a cafe, y you know, you're gonna want tomatoes sliced on your burger, or you're gonna expect, you know, tomatoes in that spaghetti sauce that you're eating spaghetti at. You know what I mean? Yeah. You don't understand that, okay, that also affects the restaurants and the cafe's ability yeah. to get it in large bulk and then make it for people. Right. And even the packaged TV dinners and junk food, <laughs> you know, they're also utilizing things out of season. Right. So that makes it a little hard then for us to really understand, go back to seasonal eating. Right. And, Our, and I didn't really understand until I was growing, you know, what, yeah. what that actually meant. I mean, I thought, well, I don't have to have, or it doesn't taste as good when it's not in season in yeah. your local area. Um, but, you know, that's no big deal. It's just a little inconvenience. But if I want chocolate dipped strawberries, you know, yeah. I can get them right now. Yeah, so, right. Exactly. Yeah, like the blueberry season, it depends on the variety you grow as well. That's true. So that's there's true. so many factors that, that go into growing. But right now, all we're doing is preparing. We have to work still the same amount of hours, but we don't have as much product it's the middle of the winter mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that has to kind of equal out you know throughout the yeah. year and all the amendments we're doing right now and yeah. getting everything ready and you know yeah. shipping stuff in like we don't have the azomite that we put in our soil in our backyard we have to order it yeah right. and pay for that so that goes into yeah. that and and that's what we're doing right now is getting ready for our spring crops and we have all of our seedlings out and we're yeah. starting all our plants and getting it all prepped for yeah see that's the other thing people don't really understand either that's kind of hard for the farmers then to get in the things that you naturally supplement with right if we don't have it here right now mm. yeah so much more goes into it than people get so what is in season right now here in the gulf coast area outside of climate change right. <laughs> outside of what our weird weather is doing what is supposed to be in season right now? Right now, most of your root vegetables, you're going to be able to do your beets, your um, turnips, uh, carrots. We'll start seeding mm -hmm. those next week. Um, we have a lot of the brassicas, so, uh, but we're having an issue with everything going to seed because yeah. it's so warm. So normally this would be, you know, Brussels sprout heaven, and they're just oh, yeah. starting to come back because it cooled off again, but right. it was so hot that they were dying. So yeah. I don't, you know, we don't even know if we're going to actually get a crop. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. So they, the plants then start to grow, and then they stall, right. and they may not come back from that, right. and then you lose 
the whole the, crop, right? right? And all the bugs get in there because they're weak. So, you know, one oh. becomes weak and then they come in and you're fighting you're fighting the, all of that at the same time while right. getting ready for the next crop to go in. So it's oh. it's really juggling. So that makes it a lot easier for the conventional farmers who are like, oh, bugs, no problem. We'll right. just spray the heck out of them. Yeah. And pesticides and herbicides even more mm -hmm. because of climate change. Because if climate change makes it go hot, cold, then that would mean you're gonna have weaker plants and more bugs and more disease, mm, maybe, right? Right. So maybe. now you're gonna have to add more pesticides and herbicides. Ah, oh, that's awful. Yeah. That's a horrible cycle. It is. Because the pesticides and herbicides are what kind of contribute to the climate change problem. Probably. Wow. Yeah. It's a big giant vortex. <laughs> right. Yeah, and we're trying oh. like more no-till just so that they have, there's more stability in the root system. Yeah. So that they're healthier. But, you know, yeah, so explain so we're experimenting no with yeah, that. Yeah, explain what no-till is or what you usually do. What is normal practice? For us, for me, I mean, you know, I've done the YouTube, look at everything, see what everybody says, and you kind of, everybody figures out their own route that they want to take. What Because we have equine, we have access to hay yeah. that's already been fertilized pretty much. Yeah. And so we use that a lot for like a deep mulch, or I have in the past. Um, and that that uh, means that you can't direct seed. You would have to take a little plant and plant it in there. So that's a little more labor intensive. Right. Um, but then there's like this symbiotic relationship between the, the roots of everything yeah. and the, the mushrooms and the earthworms. And we use worm castings oh, from awesome. a local organic company. And that's awesome. Yeah. So, I, you know, you look at a forest and there's you know, beautiful, lush, whatever's supposed to grow there, grows there. Yeah, and yeah. So we're trying to create that environment. Yeah, um, back to nature because right. nature knows best. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know that we'll be able to do it. We have so many weeds this winter oh. that, you know, we're pretty much going to have to till just to, to get the weeds. start. Oh, and yeah. so, you know, and I've never really done tractor farming before now. Yeah. I've always done it by hand and really, like, wow. So... I don't know because it's yeah. we just this has been crazy this winter. Yeah, it's so has. warm. It's been the really weeds are drying weird. really well. Yeah, <laughs> I've noticed. Which you know, it's great if you want those weeds and they're like dandelion, you can eat them yeah. and harvest them and grow them. But that would be awesome. all the others that are not edible <laughs> but invasive are taking over the root system or would take over the root system or just deplete the soil of all the nutrients. Yeah, all then, the stuff we just put in there. Uh, yeah. Yep, yeah, so. see, that's the other part, too, in eating seasonally that people kind of miss is just the amount of nutrients you get from eating seasonally versus eating outside of, like, eating those tomatoes right now when they're really not ripe, you're going to get less nutrients than when they're at the peak of their season and they're ready to ripe a few months from now. Right, and I wonder if there's a correlation between the locally grown like there is with the honey Mm -hmm. that there wouldn't be some correlation between locally grown produce that it would be beneficial, more beneficial. Yeah. Well, for one, it's fresher. I mean, yeah, it you is. Know, like and what so we brought are, today, yeah. we picked yesterday. Exactly. You right. know, and yeah. you're not going to get that from the grocery store for sure. No, and that means sure. a lot more nutrients in that food. Right, A yes. lot more. Right. Yeah, so local definitely will keep more nutrients, but yeah, the question of what's in the soil and right. what gets put into it. Or the pollinators it's even. The pollinators that yeah. are pollinating your plant. Right. You know, because it's more than one bee to pollinate the plant. Right. And then yeah. then you have, uh, who knows? So that's but interesting. Because they're just discovering all the interconnection between everything, everything. Right, and, and you hear so many people talk about local, eating local food, local produce is so much better. Um, but I didn't even think about the soil and the pollinators right. that are here to what the, what we're exposed to. Mm -hmm. And if you eat it seasonally, that would make sense. Like honey, if right. you eat it locally, it helps with the allergies because it gives you some of the medicine of what is growing What's lying and, around, right around now, yeah. and that's what you need help with. Yeah. So I'd imagine it would do the same thing in the produce. 
I don't know. I wonder. Wow. So maybe if you live in a place where you need more vitamin C or maybe you need more magnesium or something that that would be what's here. Right. Eating locally means you're going to get more of those things. Right. Yeah. So again, more bang for your buck right. <laughs> when you eat local grown organic produce. Right. Yeah. Wow. But really the freshness is, I yeah. think, the biggest factor. Oh, for sure. Uh, yeah. Really Just pulling it out of the field and you go, wow, that smells amazing. It tastes amazing. Maybe yeah. they don't know what it is about your product that, that tastes different. And a lot yeah, of times that's right. what it is because yeah. it's, you know, fresh picked, fresh and picked and we hand wash them. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wow. So many things you don't think about <laughs> with the seasons. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever um, look at the Farmer's Almanac and just see what they say? Absolutely. The, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like when to plant root crops, if it's the full moon to plant root crops. Yeah. We try to really, because, you know, I just feel like there's something pulling and pushing and all of that really is going to interrelate. Yeah. And, and they didn't make this up. Look at how accurate right. it is. Yeah. Well, for all this time, they're not just guessing. Yeah, There's some exactly. Science to Since it. the 1800s or something. Yeah. And look at the ocean ebbs and flows with the exact same, yeah. you know, cycle. Right. It, yeah, it changes too yeah. with the moon. And right. so, yeah, yeah, that would absolutely affect planting. Sure. Yeah. I believe so. You know, yeah. because they, they're, you know, like animals. It, yeah. It's just instinctive that they, they're following yeah. Some kind of pattern, but wow, yeah. So then, climate change can be such the unpredictable sort of you know cog in the wheel that you don't know what. I mean, you you're gonna try to plan for what you think. You try and plan for things, but then, like you said, with the Brussels sprouts, yeah, they're not happy. Oh, we don't know if they're coming back. Yeah. How do you account for that? Because that's got to create a lot of loss. I mean, you, it's, you just have to keep keep going. I mean, you know, like broccoli, broccoli greens right now. We're not really getting a lot of heads yeah. because it's too hot. Yeah, they're yeah. not happy, and they're, yeah. what they produce is going to be a flower. Yeah, so think, they're thinking they're going to die. Yeah, they're going to die. Right. You know. Yeah. And so then, you know, luckily a lot of people understand that the same nutrition is in that, or you know, like they buy the broccoli yeah. slaw mm -hmm. for you right. to stem and all of that. Yeah. You know, so we just, you know, we use a lot of that at home because, you know, I'm not going to yeah. throw it away. You don't want to waste it. You know, our animals yeah. get a lot of it, like our chickens. Mm. They're really happy when we have that problem. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. But no, we just, you know, you just pull it out and go to the next thing. But so. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's gotta like be. six six weeks sometimes before you you go. Well, I guess we got to move on and uh, pull it out. And take a loss if take it didn't loss. grow what you wanted, what you yep. planted, what you tried for, and yep. bought the seed uh, for it, you know, watered, planted, whatever, yeah. encouraged. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's really hard. That's it's, the it's part. the biggest form of gambling, farming. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. You stick it in the ground. And <laughs> Hope it works. Maybe we get it this time. <laughs> all, all farmers are truly just. Biggest big gamblers. gamblers. <laughs> They're just big gamblers. <laughs> the bigger the farm, the bigger the gamblers. Especially if it's organic and natural. Yeah. That's that's oh, wow. really the yeah. gamble. Yeah, it well, is. It is. <laughs> and then so that's gonna affect costs. So we talked about that before. Yeah. And that all of that goes into the waste, the you know, the cost of it because right. But I mean, you know, I guess when you know, I haven't always been a farmer. This is something that I've just my passion for trying to find organic Pickles is what started it. Yeah. I couldn't find organic cucumbers, pickling cucumbers. That's and true. And so I said, I'm going to grow them. And then, I, of course, you start with tomatoes. That's like the, <laughs> the entry drug. Right. And um, so, you know, you go forward and you think, oh, yeah, this is going to be no problem. This is going to be no problem. Everybody wants the produce. You go to a farmer's market and they're so happy. Yeah. You know, to see that the you're there produce and the farmers. And to meet you. And, yeah. and then, you know, you feel like you're disappointing people because you don't have what they're requesting. And it's out of season. And, you know, and I've had a person a say, so when are you going to have real vegetables? And they're like, oh my gosh. Oh. Yeah. I spent the last six weeks trying to get this growing. Oh. Um, but I never understood before I started growing myself. You know, yeah. it, it was like, Real eye opener to go. 
Well, that's why. That's yeah, why, you know. because this is not what grows right now. Yeah, <laughs> but when you taste the flavor and, and you really, you know, decide that that you're gonna do that for your your family, it's like yeah, you really taste the difference when you don't. Yeah. You know. Well, and I think people forget what it does to your body. Um, how income in general, and this is outside of climate change, <laughs> but in general, when foods that um, grow, let's say in the summer, like your cucumbers and your tomatoes and watermelon. Yeah. Those are, they have, they're cooling foods and they have a lot more um, water to them right. because it's hot and you're sweating and you're losing water and you need the cooling foods. Right. And that's what grows in the summer. Right. So in the winter, it's the opposite. Right. You know, the root dense, heavy, stock up and store all the calorie yeah. foods for right. what grow in the winter. Yeah. And I think people Makes forget sense. that's what our bodies eat right during those times right that's what we're intended to eat right yeah which then again climate change changes all of that because <laughs> what do you do when it's really hot and then cold and then hot and then cold and your body goes ah I yeah. need everything right then it just needs vitamin c because <laughs> you're gonna get sick <laughs> elderberry yeah right elderberry Right, some citrus, something. <laughs> something you preserve, maybe, right? So maybe mm. that's why all yeah, the fermented, right. fermented foods. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Then you have to hit that because otherwise the body's confused. Yeah, so then in the next, so you're getting ready to plant for spring now, and when will that be ready to harvest, approximately? Most of those things that you. I would say we're hoping for later March and then tomatoes and May. So late March and then April, May, that's when it'll start. That's we'll start seeing every the stuff week. that you're working now. Yeah, every week something yeah. will be coming in. And we'll start like we already started radishes. We have one. We have one house. Uh, so yeah. we already started some stuff in there. That's With awesome. The expectation yeah. that it'll slowly now start picking up. And right. In four weeks. Wow. Yeah, I think that's the other part that people forget is there's a there's always going to be a transition time where the farmers at the farmer's market don't really have anything yeah. because they're in between seasons yeah. of, okay, these are done, but we had to, okay, tear that up, start planting the new, and that's, uh, I don't know, how, how many weeks, months, how long of a window of nothing. I mean, the, yeah, the shortest period would be 20 days. Yeah, so at least, at least three weeks minimum, right. three weeks yeah. of nothing, really. Yeah. in between while waiting for the rest. And, yeah. uh, and this year, Nebraska is just horrible because it's got so warm and everything thought, oh, you know, it's yeah. too hot for me. So yeah. if you planted late, you know, in the spring, that's what would happen. And you kind of maybe think, I'm kind of pushing it. I might not get this crop out, but I'm going to give it a try because you never know. The almanac says it was going to be warm and it was warm. Uh, and yeah, now this summer almanac. it's saying really hot. So yeah. we're, just, we're, oh, we're going off of a guess. You know, it's right. an educated guess. Yeah, right, but, right, it is. Yeah, we're going to hope yeah. that, that, that that is the way it's going to be. Because if it's cool and wet, we're not, plan we're not planning on it right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. So for our, our region. Right. Yeah, it's gambling. It is. <laughs> Farming is gambling. Now you know all farmers are gamblers. <laughs> I love that. Well, thank you. You know, this has been really interesting, I think, for hopefully educational for people to hear. Um, if you left comments, we'll get back to them, I promise. We just don't have a way to do both. We tried that last right. time. Yeah, I, I we're not multitask. We're not <laughs> techno people, sorry. Uh, <laughs> the people out in the food, out in the field, growing yeah. it, not technology, no. related people, but yeah. we will answer your questions. Yeah. Um, and hopefully, more people will now understand a little bit of why they can't get everything they need and why the price changes of food and why seasonally eating is important and seasonally growing. Yeah. Yeah. What Supporting year-round would be, you know, our wish that yeah. people understand. Great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Susie. Thank you. I really Thank appreciate you for supporting it. us. Thanks, guys. And, and if you like stuff like this, um, you know, come check out the co-op where we are. Um, and we're at 219 North Michigan Avenue in League City. You can check out our website at shopnaturalliving.com, and um, our YouTube channel is also uh, Natural Living Organic Food Co-op. You can find 
all sorts of goodies and interesting tidbits, tidbits on there, yeah. And uh, we really appreciate your support. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Okay.